Hello friends, this video on crop production and management part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about the next practice that is followed in agriculture and that is harvesting. Now you would have often celebrated the harvest festivals. So what are they? Why do we celebrate them? These festivals like uh, Pongal or Makhar Sankranti or Naban. So these kind of festivals we celebrate in India to celebrate the harvesting time. Now what is harvesting? So harvesting is cutting of crops after it is mature. So this process is called harvesting. Now why do we celebrate these festivals? What is so uh, good? So what is so good about uh, cutting crops? Now that's because that so much of effort which was uh, put in by the farmers for so long. First they prepared the soil by ploughing and levelling, then they watered it, then they irrigated the fields, they applied manning or fertilizers. They did so much, uh, I mean they have put in so much of labour labor, and this is the time when they get results of their efforts. So they get the crops. So now that the crops are mature, so what do they do? They cut the crops. So this is the time when they celebrate their happiness because their hard work has given them results. Now the question is, what do we do once crops mature? Now as I said, that we cut the crops. But how exactly do we cut the crops? Because when we say that we cut the crops, it is like a huge field full of crops. So cutting so many, so much of crops is again going to be a tedious job. So do we do that manually or we again have some equipment which help us in harvesting? So that is what we will see here in this section. Now, harvesting, as I said, brings a lot of happiness. That's because all their efforts, starting from watering, start starting from watering the field, waiting for rain, praying God so that it rains, so that the field gets uh, irrigated naturally, uh, then ploughing the field with tractors or sometimes even manually. So all these efforts which have been put by the farmers they fetch results during the harvesting time and that is why harvesting brings with itself a lot of happiness and in different regions people celebrate it in different ways they give different names to these festivals and that's how they celebrate their happiness so now let us look at the tools which help in harvesting. Now here you can see the, a very common tool which is used manually by farmers to cut the crops. But if you want a machine kind of a thing which can actually automate the entire process, so that is also there. So at the bottom you can see the picture of a machine which helps in harvesting. So one tool is a simple sickle. So this is a sickle. It helps in manual harvesting of crops. So it has a sharp end here and a handle here. So handle, uh, the farmer can hold the handle and then the sharp edge can just cut it. Whereas the machine is harvester. So here you can just see the entire machine and this machine helps in harvesting the crops. So here you can see the crops, right? But this side, uh, very similar to this, you have a sharp edge here. So as the machine moves, so this sharp edge will continuously cut the crops. So manually you really don't need to move throughout the field and cut crops. So you just drive this machine and by itself the harvester will start, will do its job. So now this machine is often called as a combined harvester. Why? That's because this harvester not only helps in cutting crops. So it is called harvester because it helps in cutting crops. And why is it called combined harvester? That's because this combine also helps to separate the grains from the shaft. Now, only cutting will not help, right? Even if you cut the crops, so you are left with the grains as well as the shaft. So what is shaft? Shaft is the, uh, you can see the covering of the grain. So if you would have ever seen the uh, wheat grain or the rice grain, so you see a, a yellowish colored covering outside. So we do not need the covering. We just need the grain which is present inside. So after you cut the crops, you need to sep separate the grains from the 
uh, shaft. So this separation is also done within this machine and that is why it is called combined harvester. So let us understand the process of separation of grains and shaft and then we will come back again to combined harvester. So this process is actually called threshing where we separate the grain seeds from the shaft. So here you can see these are the grain seeds. So if you talk about rice, so these are the grain seeds which we normally eat. And what is this? These are the shaft. So they are like a thin covering on each of these grains. So each of these grain is covered by a shaft. But we are not interested in the shaft. We don't want it. So both of these need to be separated. Now when you cut the crop, you cut it somewhat like this. So when you cut it, you are actually cutting the shaft. And inside that you have the grain. Now after cutting, you need to separate it into these two parts. Now this process of separation of grain from shaft is called threshing. Now how do we do threshing because again when you have quintals of uh, crops it is not an easy task to separate it manually. So we need some equipment which will help to make the process of threshing easier and that is why we talked about the combined harvester. So let us quickly look at the various threshing methods which are used now, one common method which has been used since long time is winnowing. What happens in winnowing? It is a manual process, but here what happens is you have a, a, something like this. You would have seen this kind of a structure. So, this kind of a plate kind of a structure is there where you put the mixture of grain and the shaft. Now, what happens is when you actually blow it, when you move it up and down, the shaft which is lighter because it is just uh, the covering and it is very thin and light so it is very light and that is why it is easily blown away by the wind so this is the shaft you can see here whereas the grain seeds which are heavier they will not be blown away by the seeds instead they will fall down here so these are your grain seeds so what you can do is gradually a hit will be formed by the grain seeds and then you can collect the grain seeds from here. So this is one way of separating it but it needs a lot of manual effort. You need people who can constantly move uh, the plate so that the shaft and the grain get separated. Again you need people's efforts to collect the entire grain which has been separated. So that means a lot of manual effort is involved and also the process is relatively slower. That's because I mean you have so huge amount to be separated. So even if you separate it like this it is going to take a lot of time. So this is one traditional method of threshing. Now as I said grains being heavier they will fall back somewhere like this. So now the question is, this method is going to be tiring for the people because they will have to constantly, their hands will start aching, they will get tired standing there. So it, it's going to be a tedious job. So what should we do? So we should automate the process so that machine can take care of the separation process. And that is what is done in case of a combine. So combine is the name given to an automated machine and it does harvesting as well as threshing. That is why sometimes it is also called as combine harvester. That's because harvester it does harvesting and combine means it also does threshing. Since it does both the things so the name combine that is a combination of threshing as well as harvesting. So that is a nice idea right. The same machine will first cut the crops and then inside the machine only the grains and the shaft will get separated. So let us see how exactly the combined harvester does both harvesting as well as threshing. So this is how the harvester looks like where it will do harvesting that is it will cut the crops. So here if you see at this end you have the crops. So these are the crops and you see as it goes uh, as it goes towards this side as it moves this side gradually the crops get cut that's because the harvester is attached towards this end. So the headers, so this portion is termed as header. So different headers are used to cut different crops because to cut different crops, maybe different types of cutters are required. So for different crops, different headers are used. So that is one thing. There is a rotating wheel which pushes the crop towards the cutters. Here you have a rotating wheel and this wheel will push the crop towards this cutter. And as soon as the crop comes near the cutter, so the cutter will cut it. 
these what are these cutters these are nothing but sharp teeth like structures so you have teeth like structures here so these teeth like structures will open and close and that's how the crops will get cut okay so that's about the cutting part now once the crops are being cut then what happens then there is a threshing drum inside which will separate the grains from the shaft so the threshing part is being taken care by a threshing drum and where is the threshing drum it is located inside so the entire thing entire crop which is being cut it passes on to the threshing drum then the drum will separate the grains from the shaft then the grain will then be collected in the grain tank so in the threshing drum what happens separation takes place now once it is separated then the grains will get collected in the grain tanks now once the grain tanks have collected the grains then what happens now what do we do with the shaft shaft is something which we don't want so the grain tank is somewhere here maybe so here you have the grain tank now what will happen to the shaft which is the unwanted part so the shaft will pass through the straw walker so there is a straw walker here and the unwanted straw will be thrown out from back of the machine so from here the straw will be thrown out this is the unwanted straw this is the unwanted part so you can see some certain things are coming out of it so basically the unwanted straw or the unwanted shaft is thrown out from the back side so from this side it will cut the crops inside there is a threshing the drum which will separate the grain and the uh, shaft and then the grain will go to the grain tanks and the shaft will go to the straw walkers so what happens so once it separates the grain goes to the grain tank and shaft goes to the straw walkers and from straw walkers it is disposed out through the back end what happens when the grain tank is full when the grain tank is full it gets unloaded so the grain tanks contain the grains and the straw walkers contain the shaft so when it is full then it gets unloaded and all the grains are taken out so that is how a combined harvester works so the grains get collected in grain tank and the unwanted shaft falls off the back of the machine so this is faster so our little friend is very happy with the combined harvester so now he feels that yes we can reduce a lot of effort of the farmers and we can save their time as well because now we just have one single machine which can do both harvesting as well as threshing so towards the end of it it will give you only the desired grain seeds and that's all we wanted so now there are a few points which need to be kept in mind while harvesting so one is never burn the leftover on the field post harvesting now once harvesting is done so you cut the crops you get your desired seeds but even after that there are some unwanted maybe straw or shaft or something which is left over on the field and many a times it has been observed that what farmers do is they just burn it to get rid of it but have you ever imagined that what would happen if you burn them first of all it will cause air pollution secondly when you burn it there are chances that some desired cr other crops in the field might also get burnt so that means you can cause harm to other existing crops in the field now since you are burning it you are also spoiling the texture of the upper layer of the soil of that area so burning the leftovers on the field is not at all advisable and it should never be done so because it can cause pollution so when you burn it on the field it can also damage the existing crops in the field because it was there are the field is huge and there are so many crops which are being cultivated in that field so because of these reasons burning of the leftover on the field should never be done thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.